action. Uh, okay, so um, I'm meeting with Laura and Leslie, the other two people who teach this uh, same course uh, after our class. So we're going to go through and just figure out exactly the questions that we want on the final exam. We have a pretty good um, layout figured out, so we're just going to kind of hammer it down. Um, I realized just now, as I was checking my calendar, your guys' final is actually next Friday. Just beware. Okay, so your final exam. Final exam next Friday. Okay. Yeah, you guys have it under control. Uh, me, I'm like, oh yeah, we'll do a final exam review on Monday, and we still will. Um, and then they'll have time to review it. Um, and Boolean algebra, I think, is uh, two questions, two long answers, because it hasn't been tested. Um, but I'll give you a breakdown. So what I'm going to do is I'll post the breakdown that we land on uh, this week. So we'll kind of hammer it down, see what we get to. So I'll post it before the review session. And then um, uh, no, Mondays are in the last class. <laughs> we don't have, <laughs> we can't spare a square. <laughs> um, plum out. Exactly. So <laughs> we'll do our final exam review on Monday, and then you've got your final on. Uh, Friday. So that's a little crazy, but I'll post the breakdown and just kind of um, some notes to kind of get you on the right track. I think you have a pretty good idea of testable material. So drawing from uh, test one and our little fun quiz, which we'll call test two from now on. Um, and then because uh, it was a big test. So just drawing from those and then uh, the new stuff which uh, is since, oh no, I can't remember. Uh, oh yeah, uh, conversions between binary, octal, and that kind of stuff. So, um, <clears throat> good, so I will post, I will post uh, a summary uh, to help you study this week. No classes on Wednesday. Last day of classes is Monday. So, yeah, somehow we managed. I'm really excited actually because you guys got to be my, you got to be my uh, uh, first class of the term but also my last class of the term, which is really fun because you guys are really awesome. So, um, <laughs> stop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't stop. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's what we're deciding. So we're deciding on a, on a format. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's recorded. Um, so uh, we're deciding on a format later today. So uh, whether it's going to be, it, I, I suspect it's going to be a combination of kind of short answer will be on WebAssign and then long answer would be written because then it gives you more opportunity to kind of go for part marks. Um, so that's my, my guess. I am one of three deciding, so, uh, but we'll, we'll land on something. And I'll let you guys know in the summary. Uh, so it'll be like a, a mix of WebAssign and, and written, likely. Okie dokie, already chokey. Uh, what did we do? Oh yeah, any questions? Uh, <laughs> I say no WebAssign. <laughs> well. <laughs> 
for the short answers, it's probably the, the easiest way to do it. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, we tried to get together earlier, but it just didn't work. So anyways, uh, let's see here. It was just on Monday. So, uh, but if you do have any questions about kind of the final exam or anything like that, uh, let me know, but like I said, we're just deciding later today, so it's kind of hard to, but you can always text me or send me an email. Okie dokie. What did we do? Oh yeah, last day. Tell me about it. We were doing uh, Boolean algebra, right? So just as a quick review. I'm pretty proud of myself. I, um, I have studied Carnot maps so hard <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> and I think I've been able to boil it down to something pretty reasonable. You can let me know later, but uh, I feel like I've done it. <laughs> it's kind of, um, I don't know, if you tried to look it up or even look through those notes, it's, uh, it's Greek to me. It's, it's pretty weird. But at the end of the day, it's, I think I've got a handle on it. We'll see. Anyways. Uh, or at least so I'm not speaking gibberish in our last official uh, class lecture, non-review, whatever. <laughs> So Boolean algebra, we talked about um, just kind of some the properties, right? I gave you that huge table, that printout, and we kind of went through and we talked about, okay, well, we can use truth tables. Uh, we established some of those properties, right? And so established some properties oops some properties using truth tables and we talked about oh yeah fundamental conjunction is um, is going to be kind of a, a key term to remember. Also the literals, but that's from last day, so I'll leave that one. But the fundamental conjunction is a term, is a term where each available variable or Boolean variable Boolean variable is included either uh, either as itself or uh, its negation either as itself or its negation right. So something like if you have f of x, y, z here, right, you've got three variables. So each x, y, z needs to be represented in the conjunction, right? Um, or x bar y z right each of these can be either either x or x bar y or y bar z or z bar okay. another note that i want to say before we kind of get deeper into it because i i think i might forget uh, is note 
we can write we can write that x bar is the same as x uh, with a prime. So uh, with a little dash, especially if you're typing, that's a lot easier, right? X apostrophe is the negation, right? So that's way easier. Um, we also wrote, wrote it like this, right? With the sim sign, but, uh, or the tilde, but we'll stick to these for now. Right, so the X bar, you can use X apostrophe uh, and that'll make it a lot easier, especially if you've had a sneak peek at that Excel sheet that I posted, then I've used little apostrophes instead because it's easier to type. Okay. You don't have to open that yet. That's for my grand finale. Um, fireworks, everything. <laughs> no. Just an Excel sheet. Uh, okay, and then the last kind of thing from last day that we need to have a good handle on is the DNF, which is the disjunctive normal form. Disjunctive normal form. Okay. Which is where we rewrite F as a sum of um, fundamental conjunctions. Rewrite F as a sum of fundamental conjunctions. To get the, the DNF, right, the disjunctive normal form, we usually use the trick that, um, often use the trick that um, x times 1 equals x and x plus x bar equals 1, right? in order to force the missing variables, right? Because if you need a, a fundamental conjunction, well, then you need every possible variable represented, right? And so in order to, to force those in, if there's something missing, uh, an x, for example, then you would multiply by x plus x bar because that's multiplying by one, okay? So we'll start with an example. And we'll refer to this example uh, later on as well. So make sure you label it. Uh, I'm going to call it example three. Okay. So that's the end of the review. And so example three, okay, and I'll just make a note here. We will refer to this later as well. Okay, so what I want you to do is find, find the DNF for a function that takes three variables and turns them into one. Okay, this part is more a formality, but it is highlighting that you're going, you're going to have three variables, right? Uh, you can use X, Y, Z, or uh, later, because I got kind of uh, caught up in the notes, uh, I use a W, X, Y, and then four variables, W, X, Y, Z. So it doesn't actually matter which variables you use, uh, but there will be three of them. You could use A, B, C if you want. Could be weird, but it would work. Uh, where F of X, yz is going to be xy plus x bar z. Hey, we did example three. I flipped to the wrong page. You guys are all good with it. That's all right. Let's do this one quickly. Um, we actually did it two ways. <laughs> We did. 
check it out. I ended here, but I started up here. Uh, X bar, Y bar, Z, X bar, Y, Z. Yeah. That's the answer, Ashley. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> X bar, Y bar, Z. Well, it's part of it. Pretty sure. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. It's half the answer. <laughs> okay, but we can do this one. Um, I guess it's part of the review. <laughs> Let's do this one. If it's not feeling familiar, that's okay. Uh, but you can go back to your notes. We use the truth table to figure it out, but then we also used uh, the properties, the identities um, to figure it out. So if we need to have X, Y, and Z, but this term only has X and Y, then we're missing a Z term. And then here we're missing a Y term or some sort of X, Y, and Z. I'll do an arrow, otherwise it looks like an, a Z bar. Okay. So what we do is we're gonna multiply X, Y by Z plus Z bar, right? And here we're gonna multiply X bar Z by Y, Y bar, or Y plus Y bar. So we're, we're multiplying by one, but we're forcing that missing Z and that missing Y in there. Okie dokie, x, y times z plus z bar plus x bar. And uh, just to keep it a little bit cleaner, I'll move the z to the side and then do y plus y bar. You can keep the y in the middle. I'll probably end up rearranging them in a little bit. Um, but to me, it gets confusing to do X bar and Z kind of multiplying into the Y plus Y bar from either side. That it gets hard for me. So X, Y, Z, this I can just multiply and expand out the way we usually would. X, Y, Z plus X, Y, Z bar plus X bar Z, Y plus X bar Z, Y bar. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so what we want to do, remember um, that X plus X equals X. So what you want to do is if you have two of the exact same term, you can just replace them with one of those, right? It only has to happen once. And so just kind of scan here, X, Y, Z. No, I don't have any of those. X, Y, Z bar. Nope, X bar, Z, Y, no. So no duplicates, so we're done. Okay. So this is, uh, did I get as far as I thought I did then? Okay. Not quite. So this is uh, the DNF, the disjunctive normal form of f of x. This is the DNF of f of x, y, z. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so as long as you have uh, all unique uh, kind of combinations in each of the terms, then you're simplified. Yeah, good. Uh, we'll actually see one where they combine, so in the next example. So let's do another one with four variables. Same idea though, we just kind of flesh it out uh, by multiplying by one wherever we need to. All right, so example four, this is another one that we'll, we will refer to this one as well and just kind of work on it. 
So it's nice to follow uh, one example through, I think. So I want you to find the DNF for G of W, X, Y, Z. Notice we have four variables, right? Um, uh, is that good? Cool. So we've got uh, four variables, right? Oops. Hey. And our function g is going to be w x y bar plus w y z bar plus oops plus x y. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of time to work on that. Remembering the trick, right? You're going to look for the missing variable, multiply by one, and then also remember that x times x or x plus x is x. Okay. So even if you're still working on it, I'll just get started and I'll just identify which variable is missing in each of these terms. So we need to have a W, an X, a Y, and a Z in each of these, right? And so at W, X, Y, and a Z is missing. W, X, Y, Z is there, so X is missing. And then here we're missing a W and a Z. So, for this, uh, this last term, that's going to be a little bit more work, right, because I would probably do uh, one of them and just kind of expand out one side and then the other one. So let's, let's go. So what I'm going to do, G of W, X, Y, Z, trying to be proper, but also um, leave myself as much room as I can. So I'm going to have W X Y bar times Z plus Z bar plus W X plus X bar Y Z bar plus W plus W bar X Y times Z plus Z bar. So I've just inserted each of the missing terms, okay, as a, a one. Multiplying by one is allowed. So these first three, I just expand, uh, expand this uh, lonely variable. I expand it out. So I get W X Y bar Z plus W x, y bar, z bar, plus, and then here I did that thing where I, I tried to avoid it earlier, but now I can handle it, but um, we're just going to sandwich everything around the x and then everything around the x bar. So now we get w, x, y, z bar, plus w, x bar, y, z bar, okay. And then <clears throat> this one's going to make a real mess, right? And if you wanted to, right, you could break these terms up and kind of try to simplify them on their own and then combine them. That's fine. Um, here, I'm trying to be a hero and put them all on the same line. That's not going to happen because it's going to get pretty big. But um, what I'll do is I'm allowed to break up my lines, but just proper math ways, 
you indent your, your plus a little bit, right? Hey, bad girl. She's bad girl. She's a bad girl. Yeah. Um. <laughs> There's baddies out there. <laughs> she can't see squat. All right. So make sure you treat, uh, I'm gonna treat the Z plus Z bar as, as one thing and then I'll expand it out from there. So it's gonna involve two expansions. So I've got W, x, y, z plus z bar plus w bar x, y, z plus z bar. I guess the trouble is now I have to uh, write the top line up again and then I can expand this last line and then I can look at uh, simplifying some things, hopefully. Start this on a fresh page here. I'll even move my equal sign over. W, X, Y bar, Z. So now I'm just writing out the top line again because all that's going to change is this bottom line when I expand that Z plus Z bar. W, X, Y bar, Z plus W, X, Y bar, Z bar plus W, X, Y, Z bar plus W, X bar, Y, Z bar. Plus W, X, Y, actually I should leave a space just because I, I, I want to see, I want to be able to see properly. So you don't have to leave a space, but W, X, Y, Z plus W, X, Y, Z bar plus W bar X, Y, Z plus the W bar X, Y, Z bar. So now, check for duplicates. Since F plus F equals F, right? x plus x equals x, but also as a function, f plus f equals f. So if you have two of the same functions, right, you can imagine each of these as a little f, g, right? And so if you're able to, uh, on the second, can you identify each term? Do you mean this line? Or this one. Okay. Do you mean like, like this, these came from the same ones? Yep. And then this one became these two. And then these came, became these ones but also became these ones once we expanded it all out later. So this kind of becomes this. So I'm going to erase this because I don't want to go through and name all the functions, but you can imagine each of them functions. And then if you happen to have some that are the same, right, exactly the same, you can eliminate one of them and it'll still be true. Right. So let's see here. Just kind of cruising along. If I have a W, X, and then the only one that's barred is the Y and then a Z. So I need to look for Y bars. I only have one of these. So maybe I should go through and just call them, call them, call this F. Right. Maybe a better color, purple. Checking for W, X, Y bar, Z bar. Okay, it's hard to see, 
but I don't have very many Y bars. So it looks like I could call this something like G. W, X, Y, Z bar, I actually do have one that jumps out, right? And so here, I'm gonna call this H, but I'm also gonna make a note that this is also gonna be H because they are the same function, okay? And so here, I'm actually gonna replace this with H is equal to H, or H plus H is equal to H. The F plus F equals F is the general property, right? But in this case, because H uh, plus H, right, we can rearrange these, get these next to each other, I can just replace them with one of them. Okay? So that's why I'm looking for duplicates to try to figure out how can I simplify this thing uh, without ruining all the work I did to get all the, the variables in there. So now here, my next one has an X bar. I can see right away that none of the remaining variable or uh, functions have any X bars. So it's gonna be its own unique function. Um, we try to avoid I, so I'll use J. You can use I if you want, but. She just jumped up under the covers somehow. And now she's under everything. Not sure how she managed. She's got superpowers. Um, anyways, caught me off guard. W, X, Y, Z. Well, the only one, this is the only one. <laughs> yeah, she's hibernating. She's down for the winter. She's come out of a beautiful butterfly. Uh, I don't see any that aren't with no negation, so I'll call this K. And then again, H, I, J, K, L, and M because they are different. Right, so you can go through and just kind of, uh, you don't, you absolutely do not need to label each of these. I just find it easier to kind of group them by, by giving them names, right? But you don't have to do that, but you do want to look for duplicates, right? And so what we can do, well, we didn't get a lot, but we are able to write it without one of these H's, right? And so what we find is that, uh, what do we get, what do we get? G of W, X, Y, Z, I'll just rewrite it here is W X Y bar Z plus W X Y bar Z bar plus W X Y Z bar plus W X bar Y Z bar plus W X Y Z. Here I'm going to skip this uh, W X Y Z bar because I've already got one plus W bar X, Y, Z, plus W bar X, Y, Z bar. Whew. This is the, the disjunctive normal form of that function. Okay. So here, this is the DNF of G of W, X, Y, Z. Hmm. Okie dokie. So what we can do, and it's gonna seem like a reach, but uh, because each of these variables are Boolean, right? They're either on or off. So here we've got a series of, of zeros and ones. Good. Or more. <clears throat> okay. 
Uh, so we've got uh, lumps of zeros and ones. So uh, we're no longer talking Boolean, right? Boolean only goes between zero and one, but binary is a combination of zeros and ones. So here, if we say, okay, well, if it's not negated, we'll call it one. And if it's negated, it's a zero. So what we can do is we can rewrite this. If we just agree that uh, we're gonna list them in alphabetical order like we've done here, well, this in binary would be one, one, zero, one. Okay. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, sorry, Dermot, did you get what you needed? A little bit more? Say when. Good. Okay. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to list the, the Boolean variables in alphabetical order, just because we need to have some fixed order if we're going to assign zeros and ones to the W, X, Y, Zs. Um, they need to be in some order. We're all going to agree to use alphabetical order. So listing the Boolean variables in alphabetical order right so here this is our w x y z <clears throat> we can define any, any row with a binary label. Okay. We can define any row with a binary label. Okay. And this is on the handout that I posted last day. So I'm just gonna go there it's from the algebra notes or Boolean algebra notes part one, and it's the second one. We didn't get there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clarify any row uh, of the truth table. with a binary label. Hopefully that makes more sense, right? Because the other way that we could have found the, the DNF is, is we could have made a truth table. What you're probably gonna notice is that it's gonna get out of hand really quickly, right? But what you do is you figure out what your function looks like, right? So instead of uh, listing them like this and kind of expanding them out, what we did uh, before with the truth table is we would have to make uh, build this function. And then wherever we have a one in the function, we look at those combinations, but uh, we have four variables. So we're going to have a table of, uh, of length 16. So that's pretty nasty. Here, if we're focusing on three variables for now, and then we'll draw out the the four variables just to have it. Okay. Um, then what we can do, right? Zero, 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 off, off, off for three variables. Okay. This is for three variables. So, it's going to take a little bit, right? But each of these, in each of these uh, functions, right, we're just combining functions here, 
uh, can be expressed with a binary label, right? And so here, 1101 1, would be this term, right? 1100, 1110, right? So we can replace these on off switches with just zeros and ones. So for three variables, it's going to look like this, right? We can build it up for four variables, right? Instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we need two to the power of four rows. Right, but how you set up your table is going to be the same, right? You're going to have eight zeros followed by eight ones, and then four zeros, four ones, four zeros, four ones, and you just keep having it each each step. Two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, and then one zero one one, one zero one one, one zero one one. Okay. So for now, right? So we'll start with three variables. And if we go back to example three, where we were working with three variables, right, our DNF was XYZ plus XYZ bar plus X bar Z. Hey, I switcheroed these and I didn't switch them back. Same here. I need them in alphabetical order. I just established that, that we uh, needed that. And then I went against my own, my own thing. That's okay. So, uh, but as long as you have them listed alphabetically, you're okay. All right. So let me, I'm just going to copy this. I'll rewrite it out because it's a little bit nasty but I don't want to memorize it, so. Um, uh, we will rewrite uh, a DNF using the binary labels. For three variables, it goes from zero to seven, right? And then for four variables, it goes from zero to 15. Uh, the binary labels um, help us express the DNF more compactly. Consider the DNF from example three. Oops. So this is where I'm going to paste it, but then I'll also, uh, I'll remove this one. I'm just copying it out. I think we said it was f of, yeah, f of x, y, z is x, y, z plus x, y, z bar plus x bar y, z, right, in alphabetical order and then plus x bar, y bar, z, okay. So that's the DNF that we found initially, right? And so now what we're gonna do, instead of writing it like this, this one is manageable, right? But if you look at the DNF up here with four variables that we just did, this is, this is terrible, right? That's terrible to look at. So we want to find some way to, to kind of boil this down and, and still have that same information. So we use these binary labels as a way to refer to which line we're talking about. Okay. So here, right? Um, 
each variable, right? So here, each variable is replaced with, is replaced with uh, zero if negated and one if not negated. Negated a negation. Ha, ah, said negation, negated. So if we kind of step this out, right, in binary, we would write one, 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 plus one, one, zero, plus zero, one, one, plus zero, zero, one, right? You can see why it's so important that we have these in alphabetical order, otherwise our ones and zeros would be mixed around. So now, this is a little bit better. I don't think it's easier to read than the previous line. So there is no real improvement here. But then, so what we do is we have the label, right? The binary label, here we can refer to this table or if you wanted to, right? The label is just the value in, in decimal. So the label for three is zero, one, one which is uh, two plus one, which is three, right? So you can just confirm that um, if you move it to decimal, it'll be the binary label. Yeah. But I'll probably just use the table. So here the binary label for one, 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 whoops, is seven. Yeah. One, one, zero is six. Zero, one, one is three. And zero, zero, one is one. So what we do to express these, um, the DNF with uh, the labels instead, we use a, a summation of the min terms, we'll call them. Okay. Uh, We write the DNF in terms of the binary labels as follows. So we have F of X, Y, Z is going to be big sigma, so the sum, and then we use a lowercase m, there's a capital M, so we do, um, there's the min terms or the max terms, and those notes that I posted before for your reference, go through the max terms, we're only going to do the min terms. So we're only doing kind of one branch, but then um, you can always just do the opposite and it's the max terms. So we're just going to focus on one way, okay? the min terms. So here, we use this, a lowercase m to, to indicate that it's the min terms. And then what we do is we list in brackets, we list each of these labels, and we're going to list them um, kind of in increasing order, otherwise it looks weird. So we're going to have bracket one, three, six, seven. Okay. So I know how many, uh, how many variables I have. I have three variables and I also know how many terms or how many chunks of terms there are um, in my DNF, right, in my disjunctive normal form. And I also am able to know by kind of building it back uh, through the binary labels, right? I can work backwards. I can say, okay, a label of seven, well, that's the same as one, 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 which is on, 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 so X, Y, Z, right? 
So this is how we kind of neatly express the DNF, right, as a sum of the min terms. So the sum of the min terms. Okay. So we can do the exact same thing for four variables. Right? It's going to be easier if we have the table laid out. Um, so let's just build up the table because it's actually not going to take that long. It's pretty fun to work in, in binary. So um, we do the same thing with four variables. But our table now has uh, 16 <clears throat> combinations. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, uh, let, let me count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be uh, hexadecimal in binary because uh, it's still just um, no, so it's still in binary, but I'm sure it's related to hexadecimal somehow. I don't know how. It's good. Sixteen. It, it's just too much of a quinky dink. Um. Okay, to keep it on the same page, because I've got a page break here, I'm going to have, oh, I'll start with W, because uh, alphabetical order, W, X, Y, Z, and then the binary label. There's no room. I'll have to span two pages. That's okay. So what you're going to do, right, uh, just as you would set up a truth table, in fact, it is a truth table, right, it's the beginning of a truth table, so you have four variables, so you know you have 16 rows, so you start and you say, okay, first I need half zeros and half ones, so I'll start there and say zero, zero. I better count how many zeros first to make sure I, I don't muck it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK, good. Same thing for x, but now instead of 8 and 8, I do 4, 4, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Same thing for y, but now I do 2 and 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. What I was saying didn't match what I was doing. Not that it matters. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Here, now we've listed all the possible combinations, right? So everything's accounted for here. And uh, now we can just smush these together and find the binary label, right? You can convert it to, um, to decimal if you want to find the, the label, but it's actually just, just the way we've arranged this. It's just going to go from 0 to 15. Okay. But you can confirm it. So the binary for this one is one, two, three, four zeros. And so the label is going to be zero. Doing the same thing onwards and upwards. So here, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one. 
which is three, zero, one, zero, zero, which is four. And just kind of, um, you should be pretty quick at converting from binary to decimal by now, right? And so uh, as you're writing these out, just confirm that it does equal four, that it does equal five, that it does equal six, right? Because that'll be good practice for converting from binary to decimal. Zero one zero one is five. Zero one one zero probably make sure that you can have this handy right for when you're working on these problems. One zero zero Okay. So we've already done an example with, with four variables. So what if we wanted to write it in terms of the, the sum of the min terms? So uh, we can rewrite the DNF from example four. As a sum of the min terms, as a sum of the min terms. Okay. All right. All right. I guess I'll write it out because it'll be easier to see and easier to do. And so here, G of W, X, Y, Z. Hopefully I had it down right here. W, X, Y bar Z plus the W, X, Y bar Z bar plus the W, X, Y, Z bar plus, oops, I'm going to leave a space here because I'm going to write around these plus w x bar y z bar plus w x y z plus w bar x y z plus oops and leave a space again here plus w bar x y z bar so now if I put these, I rewrite these, if it's on, it's one, if it's off, it's zero. I'm gonna rewrite these with binary labels and then I can map them back to, uh, or binary, and then I can map them back to the label numbers, right, between zero and 15. So here this becomes, uh, yeah, one, one, zero, one. One one zero zero. One one. Oops. One zero. Haha. Uh -huh. Make a mess. Uh. One zero one zero. One 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 one. Zero one one one. And zero one one zero. So now I can use the table here, 1101 is this one, right? So that's 13. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write equals 13 here. If I'd left myself more room, I probably would have 
you know, written it below or something like that. I didn't think ahead. Uh, so now I'm looking for 1100. 1100, which is 12. It's probably easier to identify uh, duplicates in binary than with the, the variables themselves. Right, so if you haven't caught some, some duplicates, this would be the time that you do it and you can just eliminate them. Uh, 1110, 1110 is 14. Uh, 1010 is 10. And I mean, you could look at this and say 8 plus 2 is 10. Right, so you could be working through and saying eight plus uh, four is 12, right? Um, eight plus four plus two is 14. So you don't need those labels, right? It's just, I'm trying to make it easier to see. Uh, one, 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 one is 15. And zero, one, one, one is seven. Oops. And zero one one zero is not what I yeah six four plus two I don't know why I stalled uh, I wanted to do eight plus two and that's not right uh, it's four plus two. Okay, so what we can write, so now we can rewrite this as a sum of the min terms. So then what we can do is we can write g of w, x, y, z is going to be the sum of, and just write them in numerical order because otherwise it gets confusing, uh, 6, 7, uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let me just confirm here. 6, 7, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. Good. Okay. So we're ready for Carnot maps or K maps if you want to be cool about it. Did, have you guys looked him up? He's still alive. That's crazy. He, he probably does like um, talks or something. I tried to find a video of him talking about Parnell maps. I couldn't, couldn't find any. Um, he's really old. He's like 90 something, um, but he's still alive. 96. Thank you, Michael. Um, um, Ashley, you asked writing the labels in that ascending order. Is that specifically the sum of min terms? Yeah, but also I, uh, we're going to use these in order. So it's just easier. You don't really have to list them in order. But um, it's easier later. I know. If he's still alive, how are we supposed to mess this up? Don't worry, I'll find a way. Uh, <laughs> all right. Car now maps, K maps. <laughs> He should be subscribing. Uh, no, I think he will be not too impressed with how much I boiled this down. Um, then you just do this, and then you just do this, and then it's easy. He's like, hey, that's my life's work. <laughs> well, I mean, he uh, presumably helped revolutionize computing uh, from what we'll see. So uh, maybe he's a YouTube star. I couldn't find him though. Um, 
All right, let's start part two, or now maps. Or if you want, you can call them K-maps. <laughs> He's on TikTok. I still don't know what TikTok is. I don't think I get it. Well, I definitely don't have it. No, I don't know what Vine is. <laughs> I once uh, was talking to one of us. So I have two younger sisters and my youngest sister had a friend over and she was like, oh yeah, and um, like, a boomerang boomerangs had just come out and i was like oh so is that like a gif and she was like no i'm like hey but now that i think i know what a boomerang is i think i was right so anyways <laughs> all right anyways <laughs> uh, all that TikTok. Oh well. Um, I'll get I'll get it eventually, maybe. Um, the whole idea. Uh, yeah. So I knew that. Well, that's what I thought. I thought a boomerang was a get. Anyways, doesn't matter. Here we go. Uh, so. Um, Okay, I get it. Um, the only reason we use K maps is to simplify something nasty like like this, right? So we we figured out okay, here are the different combinations of on off switches we need for W X Y Z, okay? And we need all these for this function to happen, right? And so and you can go into kind of logic networks and um, and say, okay, well, I need W on and X on, Y off and Z on, right? And so it's it's a bunch of logic um, kind of things strung together, or I need uh, W on, X on, Y off, Z off, or I need W on and X on and Y on and Z off, or so it's just a, a bunch of um, logic. Right, we're gonna skip that part, uh, but it does build into it, right? Because uh, if you're pro or if you're not not programming, but if you're building some sort of hardware, um, then you've got these physical gates. I don't know anything about it, but um, it just kind of makes sense. So, um, <laughs> yeah, surprise now. Um, uh, so what we want to do is we want to try to, instead of build this system, right, and, and try to cover all our bases, we want to bring this down and, and simplify it as much as possible, but still have the same truth value at the end with the function, right? And so here, uh, we use Carnot maps. to simplify Boolean functions. Yeah, so uh, whenever you're multiplying things together, Dermot, so here what I was uh, kind of meaning to say was if I'm multiplying things, I'm saying this and this and this and this. And as soon as I'm adding, I say or. So or this and this and this and this, or this and this and this and this, uh, and then kind of all those things. Right? So it, it kind of, uh, you can replace multiplication with and and adding with or. All right, so uh, we use Carnot maps to simplify Boolean functions uh, specifically 
the DNF, right? The DNF we saw gets kind of huge because we force it to be because it has all the, the variables in it. Specifically, the DNF, which often gets, which often becomes, uh, can I say quite, quite large? As we saw in, in example four, right? Example three, it's still pretty, pretty manageable. Um, but then in example four with four variables, uh, we need a way to simplify that. Right. And we can apply properties and, and we can probably get there. But quite honestly, with a, a example four in particular, oh, great. Um, I tried to do it with the properties. I gave up and then I just used Excel to, to build the, the truth table. So, and it worked out. So, anyways, that's my grand finale, like I said. Um, so, what we do is once we've found the DNF, then we're going to create a map of the variables. Okay. So once we have found the DNF, we create a map of the variables. Okay. And I'm going to start with just two variables, right? So here, let's talk about, oh, let's talk about two variables. If I only have two variables, I'll often use X and Y. So I have X and then I have Y, each of which is either on or off. Right, so I start here off on, and uh, we will start with off first. Um, not that it's necessary, but later on, we can only switch them uh, by one term at a time as we move through them. So with two variables, it's not an issue, but we will start with zero, one, zero, one. Okay. Zero here in the Y column, is the same as y bar and here is y, right? And then here, a zero in the x row is x bar and here's x, right? So here you would have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So we have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. No. We're not going to deal with two variables. So what I want to do, I'll just move on to three variables, right? But um, here the labels would be zero, one, two, three, right? So the label oops equals zero equals one equals two equals three. Okay. All right. Let's do three variables. Okay. Or maybe what I'll do instead, I'll, instead of kind of cramming the labels on here, I'll do a separate table real quick with just the labels. So like that, and I'll have a label of zero, one, two, three. Okay. So 
Let's move on to three variables. We're going to stick to either three or four variables. So two variables was just to introduce this idea of, okay, we can make a map of these things and all the different combinations are in here, right? So with three variables, things get a little bit more interesting. Okay. And Cardo maps can handle up to six variables and then you start doing something else. Um, yeah, square time. <laughs> Uh, so, but we'll stick to three or four variables. Uh, it can handle up to six, but then you have to do kind of multiple side-by-side -side maps. Ugh. Yeah, no thanks. Um, so that's why we'll stick to, to four and three. Okay, so how we are going to do three variables is, uh, oops, I don't know why I did that. On one side, I'm going to have one variable, w, and on the other side, I'm going to have a combination of x, y. Okay. You can do w, x, and then y up top if you prefer, right? Uh, I, I put up a link to a uh, Carnot Maps calculator which you can use to just check your work, make sure you're on the right track. I was definitely kind of making sure I was doing the right thing as I was going through. So that's really useful. I'm sure you would have found it anyways. Um, but just to kind of point you towards one that I've been using, um, maybe there's better ones out there, I don't know. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have zero, one here. W can be either on or off, but now I've got X, Y here. So X can either be on or off and Y can either be on or off, right? And so here, this is where it becomes important that you only switch one uh, each time you move over. Okay, so what I mean is we're gonna start here at zero, zero. That's X bar, Y bar. Then I can only, I'm only allowed to switch one of these at a time, okay? And so uh, I'm going to go to zero, 01. And again, I'm only allowed to switch one of these. Switching this to zero makes zero, 00, which I already have. So I don't need that. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to 11. Okay. 11. And then now I need 10 which I'm allowed to do because I'm allowed to change this one to zero, right? And keep this one a one. So with each move here, with each move, only one literal may change, right? A literal is either the X or the Y. Gray code. Is that what that is? I was see I was seeing, I watched a lot of videos. Um and they were calling it gray code, but here it is, I guess. <laughs> so um so we only are allowed to so only one literal at a time. Uh, with each move, only one literal may change at a time. Whereas if we were talking just uh, a series of binary numbers, we would go 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So notice how we kind of loop back, right? And that's going to be reflected in our labels, right? So we're going to do the same thing where we make up this label kind of map as well. Okay, so what happens here is we get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, right? Just reading it W, X, Y, starting with the zero row, and then now I'm going to do the one row for W, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So now if I do my labels, 
for three variables. I'll have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And just, just remember that this is the order you need to go in. And it'll, it'll start to come. Once you draw enough of these maps, uh, this order will come to you. Right? Just remember you have to do uh, kind of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the labels here are going to be as follows, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you can kind of compare All right, so just notice this little switcheroo, but if you get in the habit of just kind of uh, reading these with the labels, right, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it gets, uh, puts you in a weird groove for counting. Okay. So we've got these labels. Uh, and if we talk about, uh, let's stick to three variables for a little bit longer, right? And let's talk about just zero being W bar and one being W. And let's talk about these in terms of variables because it's going to be easier to see. So we can write. Uh, the table of three variables. Using the proper variables or variable names uh, to visualize what's happening. What is happening? Yeah. So here, right, I'm just going to draw out my, my W, X, Y, 0, 1. Well, 0 is W bar and 1 is W. 0, 0, oops, let's do them up above here, is X bar, Y bar. 0, 1 is X bar, Y. 1, 1 is x, y, and 1, 0 is x, y bar. Okay. So we can rewrite this out again with just the variable names to see where our groupings are. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use groupings in the map to try to pull out um, some common groups. Okay, so we get w bar x bar y bar, w bar x bar y, w bar x y, w bar x y bar, w x bar y bar, w x bar y, w x y, and w x y bar. Okay, here's where things get hanky. Not so much in the three variable, but definitely in the four variables, because just as a sneak preview, for four variables, we would need to have two down here and two up here, right? So we've got a length of four here and four across, right, to get that 16 for four variables. But that's all we're changing, really, okay? Um, but the thing is that this table, we, we decided to start at zero, zero. Right. We could have just as well started at 1, 1, and then just kept going because we're only allowed to change one uh, literal at a time. So this table actually loops around, right? Uh, and, um, 
maybe a fun project is to put it on a toilet paper roll, an empty toilet paper roll, uh, and just kind of have it twirling around. And then you can see which, which groupings kind of more easily. As, especially for uh, just three variables. For four variables, it's gonna loop around the top as well. Okay, so you have to kind of um, be in the right mind space because it's gonna, it's gonna loop around. Okay, so what we do, the groupings are gonna depend on uh, what stays stationary, okay? And so here, the only thing that's not changing for this top row is W bar. So if you find yourself, and we're gonna be grouping something like this, right? If you find yourself uh, creating a group like this, then that group can be replaced with W bar, right? If you find yourself making a group like this, you can replace that group with just W, okay? And you can see how that would simplify things a lot. Now, here's the thing. If I want to do a group of Y bar, Y bar would be here, right? But also over here, I've got Y bars. But those would be all my Y bars. And so here, if I needed to make a group of Y bars, right, it would keep going like this. Yeah. The table um, kind of loops around, or it's continuous if, if that helps. So the table loops around. Yeah. So if you find that you have items here, here in the four corners, then you're allowed to make a group and you're allowed to replace that group with Y bar. Okay, how do we get these things to group? That's a weird thing to talk about, right? Because we haven't even seen any, anything to group. Okay, well, these groups are gonna come from the DNF that we've made, right? Specifically those labels that we've talked about, right? So rewriting them in terms of the, the sum of the min terms lets us map those min terms out on the map and then we group them. Okay. So after finding the DNF as a sum of min terms, we map the labels on a Carnot map. Okay, so that's why it's so important in three variables, for example, right, that you remember that the label zero, one, two, three, right, two is in the far end, and then you move back for three, four, five, six, seven. So you'll get really good at kind of moving through the table, through the labels, okay? So let us do an example and I'll kind of show you by example. So if f of w, x, y is the sum of the min terms 0, 2, 4, 7. So now I'm not giving you the function. You don't have to find it. Of course, uh, a natural progression would be find the DNF as the sum of the min terms. Now use that sum of the min terms to find the, the simplified form with a Carnot map. Here we're just jumping in. Here's the DNF. Great. Okay. Uh, so if this is the DNF, uh, simplify f of w, x, y using a Carnot map. OK. 
Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first make a blank map of WXY and I'm going to use the same format that I had up above. So I'll have WXY. Yeah. And <laughs> you can use the variable names. I'll probably just use the binary because it's it's easier, quicker to write. Zero, one, zero, zero. And so here's where you have to remember the order. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero. Yeah. And then what we do is well, just because we're starting, I'm going to put the labels on here and then I'm going to circle the, the labels that I need, right? Later on, you're just going to put ones on the labels that you want, right? So the labels are zero, one, oops, I almost did it, the, did it wrong, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, making sure you go to the end and then come back to the uh, second to last one. So my DNF has zero, so I'm gonna kind of make sure I I have something here. Zero, two, four, seven. Okay. Now. Right? Instead of having these labels kind of clouding my, my brain, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to write ones where I have a midterm. Okay. So you don't need to do the first step, but you do need to do this step, WXY 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. One, 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 one. Yeah. Place ones in the locations of the midterms. All right, now here's the deal. You want to make groupings, groups as large as you can, and we're going to move in powers of two. So two to the power of zero is just one. So you're allowed to make uh, groups of one if you absolutely have to. You want to try to avoid it as much as you can, uh, but sometimes you have to. Okay. Um, <laughs> and we want to try to make our groups as large as possible. So groups of one, two, four, eight, right? Uh, so powers of two. Okay. Um, now make groups um, of one, two, four, eight, etc. Trying to keep your groups, trying to keep your groups as large as possible. In this case, it's not going to be very easy because, um, well, it didn't really, there's not a lot of ones on here, right? So it doesn't really lend itself. Now, you're only allowed to group uh, in ones, twos, fours, or eights, right? Powers of two. And you're allowed to only group neighboring ones and your groups are allowed to overlap. So there are a lot of rules here, right? Um, but the first group that I see is gonna be, right? I see this group here. And I'll call this group number one. All right, or maybe I'll put a circle on it. Okay. So now, okay, so I have one group. The idea is you want to take all these ones into account in some group. Okay. 
The next group, keeping in mind that this, uh, you can rewrite the zero, zero on this side, right? And then you would be able to group this one with this one, right? So they're allowed to overlap. So what we get is I'm just gonna show like this. This is my second grouping. Okay. It doesn't seem like there's a way for me to group this, uh, this individual isolated um, lump, and that's okay, that's okay. So here, this is gonna be my, my third term. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite, okay, let's go back to this first one. Okay. How can I summarize this thing? Okay, so it looks like uh, for this column, right, this is the X bar, Y bar column, right, the zero, zero column and w is allowed to do whatever it wants right so i can summarize this as x bar y bar because this is x bar y bar because they're both zero and so that's this whole column so as soon as you have a complete row going across here so if you have this whole row you would have w bar and this whole row, this bottom row, you would have W. And then each of these uh, columns, right, would be a combination of X and Y or their uh, negations. So the second grouping that I have here is a little bit harder to see because it looks like uh, W bar stays solid. All right, so W bar stays steady. And then uh, X is allowed to go between zero and one for these two, right? Here it's zero, here it's one. So, okay, that one's changing. The other steady one is the Y bar right here. Y bar is, uh, or Y is zero, and here Y is zero. So this grouping, we can summarize as W bar, Y bar. And then the X is allowed to change and be whatever, and it's being lumped into one group. So W bar, Y bar. Finally, that third group, well, it's just on its own and there's no kind of summary that I can do, so I just have to use it as it is W, X, Y. So what we can do is that we can rewrite, okay, this obviously had four terms and um, probably pretty complicated to write out, right? Uh, F, W, X, Y, now we can rewrite it in a simpler form, even simpler than this, and, uh, and implement it kind of hard, hardware-wise uh, as the sum of this, so the sum of products. We can, uh, or therefore, we can rewrite f of w, x, y as the sum of products, which you'll all, uh, you'll see it as SOP, sum of products. So f of w, x, y, we can write as X bar, Y bar, right? That's this first one. Plus W bar, Y bar, plus W, X, Y. Okay. That's the simplest form that we can find for implementing F of uh, W, X, Y. Okay.
Okay, I want to get the the kind of the facts written down, and then um, and then we can leave the examples for next day. Uh, will there be times when we've given the simplified version um, and have to go backwards? No. I'm locking it in. Yeah, so I, uh, but I wouldn't get you to go from this to the DNF because that's just expanding it back out. So uh, the, the DNF takes a non-simplified function, blows it up so we have all our variables, and then we boil it down with the Carnot map to simplify it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, but very similar, right? But we're not going to do that. We're not going to take the simplified form and undo it. We would take a different uh, function or a different version of the function, blow it up, simplify it, and then back off. And then forget all about it. Um, okay, so some notes, some, oops. Notes on Carnot maps. And then I'll let you go, I promise. Um, we need to make our groupings in, uh, in powers of two. So we need to make our groupings in powers of two. So two to the zero is one, two to the one is two, two to the two is four, two to the three is eight. We're probably not gonna find uh, any groups larger than eight. It's really hard to find, but those are the rules. Uh, and always, start with the largest groupings possible. So always start with the largest, with the largest groupings possible. Remember that the map uh, cycles, right? Remember the map cycles. So groupings can be made from one end to the other. So groupings can be made from one end to the other. We just saw that. And groupings are allowed to overlap. Groupings are allowed to overlap. And I know we're out of time, so I'm just going to write out uh, these examples and probably a good idea to, for you to write them down and uh, maybe try them before we meet next week. But, uh, and then we'll go through them. So use a Carnot map to simplify. A, f of w, x, y is the sum of the min terms 0, 2, 4, 6. 
And so what I want you to do is just go through each of these three and you can always use that calculator that I posted online to, um, to check your work, right? But we'll go through them together. But f of w, x, and y is the sum of the midterm 0, 1, 2, 3. And c, f of w, x, y is the sum of the midterms 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. Uh, or maybe kind of, I'm a bit worried. Don't worry. Uh, probably Laura's class, if you're talking to someone in Laura's class. She's pretty hardcore. Um, don't worry. We are, so uh, for things, Oh no. Um, a lot of the time it's just wording too, right? Uh, I didn't kind of push you guys as, as hard as I could have. We've done what we need to do in the course. Uh, whereas I know some, some profs like to kind of push you, push you, push you. Uh, they've been doing complex numbers, those lucky ducks. Uh, no. It wasn't in the, in the outline that we had, so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's not really my style, but I can, I can see why that would be kind of uh, a little bit unnerving. We are doing a common final, but of course I'm allowed to word questions the way I would word them. And so um, just remember that that I know how you're used to seeing questions and I know the things we've done. I'm not gonna ask you to do something that we haven't done. That's on me, uh, that's not on you. And um, yeah, so if you're feeling worried about it, uh, don't be. If there's anything that I, I need you to work on on your own, um, I'll make sure you have what you need for that. So, okay. Hopefully that wasn't too vague, but uh, okay, good. We're doing what we need to do, but nothing more. <laughs> oh yeah, what's my dog's name? Ooh. I'm not even sure she's here anymore. <laughs> yeah, she's a bad girl. <laughs> Yeah, she's a good girl, but sometimes she's a bad girl. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. All right. I'll keep you posted on what we decide tonight. But uh, see you Monday for our last class. I'd be lying if I said I, I wasn't sad about it. Bye, guys.